This day means that when God created human beings, as the Bible tells us, he created a man. But they say the man was not happy, that is Adam, to live alone, and God made sure that when he slept, he stole one of his leaves and created a woman. And that means that women are to make people happy and to make the world happy. A world without women wouldn't be a world. It wouldn't multiply. So it recognizes the roles of women as in comforting people and society, the role of women as in multiplying the society, producing children so that they become many and citizens and they play their roles. So we as women, we are special creatures. And that's why the world wouldn't be complete without us women. And that's why we celebrate this day and it's internationally recognized and we thank our God for this day, we thank our God for his love. Yes. Mm. Yes. The women, as you had many of the presenters on science and technology there, were women, most young girls. That means that women can now do anything. You know, some time back, there are fields which people thought women cannot do them better. And science and technology was one of them. In fact, some time back, as you may be aware, uh, a girl child it would be hard for them to do science subjects. But these days, they can do science subjects and even they excel more than the boys. Even the recent results of uh, UC and UCS, you, the, 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 you heard that the, the biology, the, most of the students failed biology. But even those few who excelled were girls. So science and technology incorporating women in this movement of the digital era, I think it's a good thing. Because then we are no longer looked at as individuals who don't know what to do. So I'm grateful that we are entering field by field. The Yame, you saw, the palette, commanded by women. So if we are in science and technology, that means that the world is complete. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we are celebrating this day. Of course, just like my president has been talking, about those evils, homosexuality, les lesbianism, those are not new things. For us, those things have been there in the world, elsewhere. But as Uganda, we have always stick to our norms and culture. Yes, we may be having a few individuals who might have gotten lost, but me, I'm sure that when we pray and we focus on our norms and principles here, as Africa, but also as Uganda, more so. Me, those, I don't have worries about those evils. I don't. Because they have existed before. They have been there. They are not new. And we have maintained, at least the majority in our country, we have maintained our norms and culture. So I don't want to say that this time around, Uganda will be taken over by homosexuality or lesbianism. No. We shall continue to, to nurture our children in the proper ways that has been done before, and they will continue living that. So I'm not worried. Yeah. Yes. My name is Namwenga Rita, the national coordinator of the Mioga program. And uh, you imagine the, Mioga, the national coordinator of the Mioga program is a, a woman. Today we are celebrating the achievement of women. Most women have been having inferiority complex because they have not been empowered for reasons that um, are not best to them, but because of cultural issues. But the government of Uganda came up and has empowered women through many initiatives, and one of them is the initiative I had, and that is the Mioga program, which is a presidential initiative. Many women have been empowered, and majority of the enterprises favor women. For example, the saloon operators, the restaurant operators, the women entrepreneurs. And nowadays, even because of affirmative action, the jobs done by men are also done by women. You find women as fisher women, we find women as carpenters. They have embraced these initiatives to 
make sure that they also have a source of income in their homes. Because it's written that men are handsome. Men must have money. Their hand must have something. But women are helpers of men. The women are supposed to support men to make sure that their hands are full. So women, uh, when you empower a woman, you've empowered a nation. This presidential initiative has empowered so many women. And um, out of the 646 circles that are in Uganda, 70% of the circles are for women. Many of them, women are there, and there is affirmative action. Women have transformed, and you've seen many of them exhibiting their products as women. My name is Namuinga Rita, the National Coordinator of the MUGA program. As a woman, of course there is that inferiority complex because people look at women as uh, an inferior group. But with the empowerment and the equality created by the Constitution of Uganda, women, I, I don't find it hard. I just feel what a man can do, I can also do it. I remain Namwenge Rita, the National Coordinator of the Yoga Program. My name is Mary Fever Kato, and I'm the State House uh, region, Sub Regional Coordinator for Ankole. Uh, for this program uh, of um, yoga and I'm so happy to be here today. It's a women's day and uh, I really thank uh, President Um7 that on such a day we, we as women we celebrate things including um, yoga. Uh, um, yoga is a presidential initiative uh, that came to empower women economically, socially, and in a lot of things, for example, innovation. Because the word emyoga actually means what people do. And uh, very many women, especially in my region here in Ankole, have been able to be empowered economically, have been able to come from behind and come in front to have businesses, to own supermarkets because of emyoga. They are given seed capital, they are told to save, they are uh, actually uh, told to, to invest and this has really empowered them. Uh, this has even caused the stabilization in marriages. This has made women uh, be stable uh, in, in what they do because they are not hungry for money. This has reduced moral decadence. Uh, they no longer do some uh, bad jobs because they want survival. So we really thank the president and I cannot fail to thank Microfinance Support Center that has been the implementing agency in this program. And here in Ankole, we are performing very well. We have almost the best groups in the whole Uganda. Women are doing very well and we are so impressed. And on such a day, we are here, we have actually exhibited what we do. Some of them are doing uh, liquid soaps, others are doing yogurts. We have helped so much Uganda in value addition. We have uh, women are doing uh, wine. So it is really a very good uh, program and we thank His Excellency. And uh, my name is Mary Fever Kato, uh, the State House Sub Regional Coordinator. My name is Katsime Anet Mujisha, woman MP Ushenyi District. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all women in Uganda upon reaching this day. To us women, this day is very, very important. And we have a lot of things to celebrate. First of all, we thank the, His Excellency Owe Kaguta Museven who is going to be here with us, to celebrate with us. Why? Because he has prioritized women. He has empowered us holistically when it comes to economic, political, social, cultural. We have been prioritized and we cannot take that one for granted. We want to thank him for encouraging us to engage in different economic activities as women so that we can uplift ourselves. Today's theme is very clear and is directly to us women that we have, uh, we use the equal opportunities in education, equal opportunities in science, innovation, and uh, in science, technology for innovation and agenda equal tomorrow. This calls for uh, women, this calls for our girls, the youth, to ensure that today we put emphasis in sciences.
First of all, ICT is very important. Uganda is becoming a global village, and we cannot do much apart from emphasizing on ICT. We want to call parents. Parents are the first teachers. Let us encourage our girls, our girl child. Educating girls should be for everyone. Let us not leave girls outside. Let us empower both girls and boys, and more especially in science subjects. I want to assure you, Ugandans, that it is very important that we must have scientists in this country. Because when you go to hospitals, when you look at roads, you need engineers. When we, this ICT, everything is now online. When you're selling goods, when you are applying for visas, you want a ticket, you want a passport, you want to, you know, to trade. Everything is now going to be online. So I want to thank all those people who came up with this theme. It is very important, it is varied, it is relevant. During this time, we can't do much without ICT. So I congratulate all of you, but I want to just encourage you about one thing, fellow women. Let us have steady families. Let us respect our husbands. Let us nurture our children to be God-fearing. Let us uh, embrace development, engage in different enterprises to improve our welfare, to uplift our families, to be economically strong, and be able to be elevated from one level to another. Long live Uganda. Long live His Excellency Yoweri Kakutam Seven. Long live women of Uganda. Thank you so much for empowering women. We have the Speaker of the Republic of, U of the Parliament of Uganda, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. We have ministers who are women, members of Parliament. We appreciate this uh, affirmative action. Thank you so much and wish you a, a beautiful day. Happy, happy. Yeah, the women of Uganda, of course, we continue celebrating ourselves and we celebrate the achievements of women from where we are coming from, where we are and where we are going. You know, if we don't keep on celebrating the milestones that we have achieved as women, definitely we can go in slumber. But we want to thank the NRM government for bringing us this far, particularly the women in leadership, the women in science and technology, the women in all positions in the army. It means that the voices of women are being represented in all decision-making levels. And for us, that is most important. Because when that we, the voices of women are represented everywhere, it means that even that woman who cannot reach that level is represented. And for us as women, we want to thank His Excellency for supporting us as women and even for bringing women to the highest levels. We are celebrating the Vice President, we are celebrating the Speaker, we are celebrating the Prime Minister, but we want to call upon every woman who occupies every higher office that they use that position, promote the issues of women, to promote women, to bring other women so that they don't remain behind, so that we move at the same pace as women of Uganda. And I want to thank the theme of this year. You know, government of Uganda has promoted science and technology, and we see scientists are benefiting a lot. If as women we are not strategic to be in this, to be scientists, we are going to bring disparities in income because we, we are going to find men being paid highly and then we stay behind. We remain as clerical officers. So as women of Uganda, we should now start sensitizing our girls to, from, right from the family, by the way, primary to up to the university, we encourage them to start taking sciences such that we don't allow, uh, lose out the opportunity that the country is focusing at. You know, we are on, sitting on a time bomb as parents if we don't come out strongly as leaders to rebuke, to make sure that we strongly bring our children on board to fight homosexuality. This homosexuality is not going to be fought by leaders only if the parents are not involved. We need to talk to our children, both boys and girls, by the way, when you are talking about homosexuality, the both sexes are you know, involved. And the issue of luring our children into homosexuality 
is the issue of the economy. So if we want to fight this, we need to bring them on board to fight those people who are using their money to, to lure children into homosexuality. But as parents, do we have the time to sit down and discuss with the children about issues of, of homosexuality? Do we have that time? Do we wait for the schools to begin, you know, pronouncing themselves and even talking from schools that there is homosexuality? During holidays, do we talk to our children? This issue of homosexuality is going to be fought by parents. And I want to call upon Ugandans that this is the time to raise our voices wherever we are. We shouldn't leave it with politicians. We shouldn't leave it with the church. We shouldn't leave it with the police or the army. It is the thing that is coming to destroy the culture of Uganda and Africa at large. There is 